Hello everyone and welcome to our new building series, A Street Through Time. We are here at an early man and a Stone Age iron fort that is based on around 10,000 BC to 2,000 BC. So way back, the Sims are just starting out in their in their little township they kind of don't back then people didn't really have sort of a specific spot they used to locate themselves in woods near good hunting areas that were good for forestry and hunting animals like deer and foxes and wild boar and all sorts of stuff like that so we are so we're going to be building some a little township sort of place for them to stay for their season. Most people moved about for the different seasons depending on what sort of food was available and they kind of hunkered down for winter times and moved around in the summer times. So uh, they started off basically with animal skin tents. The, this town it has progressed a bit a bit further than that with building actual mud mud hut structures but kind of keep it in keeping some of the tent vibes as well kind of supporting things with bricks and using sort of animal skins and furs to line the walls and using mud to build the outside using the skins and furs to make the roofing as well and we have a pond which they would use for fishing and back but then there was there was a, an emphasis on the spirits in the forest in the woodland gods so we will be putting in some some worship sort of like offer bowls near near one of the trees and we've got sort of the more older looking trees that were kind of in the ancient forest that kind of surrounded the entire britain now nowadays that those forests can only be seen when they're like dug out of peat bogs and on on beaches sometimes as well so they would have like deer skulls on poles and stuff like that to worship worship these gods the tools that they had were kind of just flint stone obviously as is the stone age and the bones of the animals and they would craft them into basic basic tools that they could use to start doing some like basic archery and basic sort of fishing and hunting spears and all sorts of things like that they did make like canoes and sort of started making more wooden objects like tables and stuff so i've used some of the dubai the debug menu to make to bring out all the crudely made like wooden objects to place around the place and they use the washing lines that i have out the front to create a place where they would dry off the animal skins and sort of dry their clothes as well let's i have dressed the family that we see later on in sort of some handmade linens and stuff very much all the patchwork type of stuff and we we have the the man of the of the family dressed in all white to kind of represent being a priest of the of the woodland god the sort of dynamic that they would have in the tribe there'd be a few sort of families all together they'd probably be all like related in some some way and that's kind of how it started there would be a storyteller that obviously be a priest as well and everyone would have sort of their own role so one lot would be the hunters one lot would be the gatherers every person who's a fisherman and sort of their skills would denote what sort of possession they would have in in the dynamic of the camp and they they would the only sort of animals that they would have would be would be dogs as they're the ones the only ones that they would tame obviously we've got some wild chickens <laughs> that have kind of associated with them but it isn't until much later when 
the the sims would have started domesticating animals they would also create stone circles as well to worship the sun and the different gods as well because back in the stone age it was really easy to move from britain across to mainland europe to like norway and france because there there wasn't a massive channel of water there it was just a very large river so you could easily cross between the two and explore different sort of land masses during the different time periods like times of the seasons it was actually much warmer than it is today it was about i think it's about two 2.5 degrees warmer than it would be in the summertime and about three three degrees cooler in the winter time as well so it was pretty pretty chilly the average temperature was around 17 degrees and that is about 62 fahrenheit and that is kind of mainly because there was there wasn't actually much going on back then the antarctic actually was a forest so people used to go up there and catch things like wild boar and deer reindeer moose and all sorts of exotic animals even there is like people are found in bogs and stuff because of a lot of like bog places where they used to trap different animals that were too large for them to hunt like elephants rhinos and hippopotamuses that actually roamed around britain at that time so they used to work as a team to sort of drive them into these bogs where they would sink and then they could easily capture the animal for for food and stuff so inside the huts we have like crude sort of mats and little fireplaces inside where they would cook their food obviously that would be pretty dangerous because they they wouldn't have any controls over the fire sometimes and things would go a bit wrong so they that's why they also situated themselves next to a river because you've always got a fresh fresh water source and you have the water to douse any of the fires and stuff in there so it's kind of building up our our little little town and uh repeats quite a lot of the sort of things we have in there obviously i've had to put in some <laughs> like baths and some beds and stuff because they wouldn't have actual beds but obviously in the sims they would need to they would just sleep on the sleep under a fur from an animal and use anything that they could to kind of just have a comfortable night's sleep i put a, quite a few like crafty items about on the walls and stuff just to represent some of the different crafts they might do like you can like whittle wood with like crude bits of stone and maybe they fashioned stuff into different things so we've got some like some tapestry size sort of things on the walls as well just to note this and as there wasn't that many people about the technologies and innovations that were happening across the across the globe at this time took uh, quite a long time to get over to britain so the so the fact that there wasn't a channel and anything like that made it easier for these technologies and the cult different cultures to grow sort of each different tribe or group of people would have different like different rituals and different customs that they would bring with them and obviously share them with different <laughs> different people as they met along the way obviously they wouldn't actually bump into that many people that a lot of the time so depending on whether they were hostile to them or whether they were kind of nice to them would depend on whether they could swap stories and technology and ways of doing things which would have been important for people as they started to develop as small little societies of their own and obviously when they started to make their own little place for themselves sort of to start up where a town would eventually be it would be important for them to know all the things that they needed to to kind of 
set their foot in the correct place like they would eventually get on to learning some farming and getting different seeds working out which berries were good to eat which weren't good to eat which was very important because most of the decisions they were making most of the time were life and death decisions which is kind of hard to imagine as these days we don't really have any life or death situations obviously they would need to work out whether they were basing themselves near any wild animals as well because obviously if there are wolves in the woods at all then it wouldn't be a very safe place if they kept having their food and their stuff ransacked for for meat for the wolves if they were near them and i gave the each episode that we have of this series the family will change slightly they will come and embrace the the entire era in which they which they have found themselves in and kind of show you the different activities that go on as through the different ages we slowly progress into getting to to new technologies and new new ways of doing things which will be super interesting to find out kind of made a a small land barrier between them and the forest area so we've got a a little sort of bush one of the bush fences to kind of fence off where the edge of their little their little settlement is so it kind of represents where where a they might end up building a wall and stuff we've got a few sort of stone markers that they would have put up to remember any of the fallen in their village to sort of just mark where they are there wouldn't be proper graves or anything and we've got that little wooden wooden archway to sort of represent the front of the entrance to their village as well and I made sure to add a lot of like dirt and use a lot of terrain painting tools as well just to add in the fact that they would be walking these paths near enough every time they would come along so the ground would easily get churned up especially if it was super wet or super dry it would turn turn the land into a a very path trodden place especially if it's a place that they come back to every year it kind of set them set up where their paths have already existed because if each tribe kind of came along and settled in the same place you'd obviously get a lot of the same track marks and stuff and we made sure to add in a lot of foliage and stuff about because obviously they wouldn't they wouldn't be bothered about clearing out the land for them to see they kind of fit fit themselves within the land itself kind of use natural barriers like the trees and the obviously the water sources and stuff to make sure they had plenty of stuff to eat and drink so we've got a very various variety of plants and different trees and all sorts of stuff and you notice that it looks looks quite cold as well the kind of landscape is very much greener and browner it's kind of represent the what it might have been like back back in the stone age and the family dynamic would have been that the it was a more male sort of orientated way where they would go off as they would be the quote unquote stronger type so they would go off hunting and doing more of the manual labor where the women would stay behind and tell stories and educate the younger members of the tribe with what actually happened like stories that how of travel or of different things they had experienced and teaching them different ways obviously the some of the younger ones would eventually go off and go hunting and stuff like that so they could practice their skills and hone them better to make them able to carry on the tribe into the years to come because obviously 
it was important that people had as many children as possible because obviously the the life expectancy wouldn't have been very long at all it would probably only been about (laughs) to the age of like 30 40 would have been extremely old in those days so people had kids younger they had they got older a lot younger as well so it was important that people kind of (laughs) procreated enough so that they could parry on the tribe and the traditions that they had grown and obviously by meeting new people along the way would have helped with that as well because obviously you don't want too much inbreeding when you've only got a small child so creating a lot of different diversity and stuff and that was made even easier by having just a small bridge across to the channel and that led all the way down to Africa as well so it was a pretty good mix of people as well so we are going to take a look around the village and I will leave you here and next time we will be traveling forward in time to the Iron Age and we will see how things have changed and what new technologies that brings with us so I will see you in the next part bye